Who wants to talk about my YouTube filming setup? I know that I personally probably searched for this type of content a lot when I was just getting started on YouTube because it's like, what cameras are best? What lights are best? What mics are best? What should I use? Where should I go? What should I film with? All of these things. And I always found it really helpful when other creators would say, here's what I film with. Here's what I use. Here's what's worked for me in the past. Here's what hasn't worked for me in the past so I can make my best decision. So today I'm going to take you through my current YouTube filming setup and kind of tell you what I started with, where I've went from there and the different iterations of what it has looked like and why it looks the way it does now. What's up y'all? My name is Jessica Stansberry and I am here to help you figure out all the things you need to know to run a successful business, to be a successful content creator, hashtag all the things. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you hit subscribe below so you don't miss any other videos from my channel twice a week. Now I've went through a lot of iterations on how I film, what I film with, what cameras I use, what mics I use, all the things. And before I tell you kind of what that looks like now, I need to say, and I have said this 10,000 times and we'll probably say it 10,000 more, use what you have. You have an amazing, amazing camera in your pocket. You have the best lighting you can possibly have in front of a window. You have good sound in a non echoey room. You do not need to spend hundreds or even thousands of dollars to have good quality videos and to have a good video setup. I started filming videos here on YouTube with an iPhone and a well lit room. Now looking back on those videos, I wasn't as well lit as I should have been, but that's really where I started. And that is how my YouTube channel started to grow. It didn't matter that it wasn't the fanciest camera or my background wasn't all blurry and all the things because what mattered is the content I was putting out was good. <laughs> If you hear hammering in the background, that is because my husband is home and doing some kind of random work on the barn today. And I don't know what else to do because I needed to film today. So here we are. Okay. So we addressed the fact that when I first started, I used my iPhone, which wasn't near as good as the iPhones are now. And I used windows as my lighting. And I will say something that hasn't changed basically at all is that I use windows as my lighting. I really don't use a lot of external lights unless I just absolutely have to. And in that case, back here in this closet, I have a ring light and a couple of umbrella lights that I can pull out if I need to. Now, one of the things that I did in my old house and then also did in a higher scaled way here in my new house was to incorporate daylight bulbs into the lighting already in my office. So in my old house, I had windows all around me, but on the right hand side of me, I did not have any natural light. So I basically had light coming in from the front and from the left and from the back, but none from the right. So I stuck a daylight bulb, which is the cool blue bulbs. I stuck those in a lamp and I stuck it over to the right hand side of me. And now because I knew that this was going to be my office when we built the house and because I knew that lighting is so important and that sometimes I have to film in not ideal situations, I put six can lights in my office and they have daylight bulbs in them versus the regular warm yellow bulbs in the rest of our house. So you can actually tell if my office lights are on at night and the rest of the house lights are on at night that my office lights are much bluer, much cooler. And that's because that is what generally looks a little better on camera, particularly for me, I'm a redhead. And so you get a little too much yellow lighting around me and I glow like a glow worm. But I really, I really don't use any external lights. I do usually have my office lights on above my head. And the reason I have so many lights is because I knew if I just had one light, I would struggle with like, oh, let me get under the light. Let me, you know, do what I needed to do. But I am literally, there's a window right here and there's a window right here. Now at this angle, they are not quite bringing in the same amount of light. That's why there's a little more of a shadow on my face over here. But if I move the camera, 
right there, I am directly facing a window. So lighting wise, I use the Lord's lighting, just saying. That doesn't mean I'm opposed to artificial lights. I do have a ring light, like I said, and some umbrella lights, and sometimes I do need to pull those out, but for the most part, I film with natural lighting. As far as my actual camera goes, when I upgraded from my iPhone, I upgraded to a Canon G7X, but it's kind of that like, quintessential vloggers camera. And I will say I didn't actually use that for videos on my channel for very long at all um, because I really wanted that blurry background, clear me, blurry background. And in order to get that, I upgraded to a Canon 70D with the 24 millimeter pancake lens. Now, I like this camera and I filmed with it for years um, and I still really, really love it. The problem is it's big, it's bulky, it's hard to move around and the sound straight out of the camera of this is horrible. Even with an external mic, it wasn't good. Now, now that I have the mic I have now, which I'll show you guys in a second, I think I could probably get away with it, but now I've gotten so used to just using this one that this bad boy has kind of went into storage. But essentially like, if you're looking for a really blurry background, if you're looking for something that's gonna do well in low light, this is the camera for you. It does a great job filming video. Now, my biggest complaint is in order for me to really get its best quality in low light and to really get its best quality as far as like that blurred background look, I needed this 24 millimeter lens. Now there were obviously other lenses I could have picked, um, but with the budget I had at the time, this is the one I went with and I love the lens. The problem is with filming, as far as I'm sitting away from the camera right now, if this were the camera I was filming with, I would have to be all the way up against this wall to have this same shot because it crops in to that 24 millimeter position. So when I was using this, I actually was filming my sound separately from my video because it, like I say, even with an external mic, like a top of the camera mic on that bad boy, it still had a hissing noise and was still really echoey and I couldn't stand it. So with that, I actually used this and found it. So I actually used this and this Zoom H1 audio recorder. So I filmed separately. This is not something you hook to a camera. This is something that records audio on its own and I would just stick it like on my desk or somewhere just out of frame, record the audio on that and do the video on this. Now that worked really well. The audio from this is seamless and amazing. And in editing, all you really have to do is like I made a harsh noise at the beginning of filming. So usually like a clap or whatever. And I would sync up the clap audio like spike from this and then the clap audio spike from this in editing. And I would know that's where they started. I would delete the audio file off this and just use this one. Now I have a whole video on how I did that. Um, that I, it's kind of old, but it, the process is the same. So I will link that below. But another problem with this setup was that it was very hard to move around my office. Now in my old office, that didn't really matter that much. I kind of just filmed in one spot. I didn't really have a lot of angles I could use because of the way the lighting came in, because of the way my desk was set up, all of that good jazz. But in this office, I have several different filming spaces. So I like this. The camera currently is sitting on my desk. It's actually sitting on my desk on a box, um, which I'll show you in just a second, but the camera is sitting on my desk and I'm getting this in the background. One of my other favorite shots is the one we were using a minute ago and the camera is still on a box on my desk. It just is moved to a different angle. Um, I will oftentimes do this as well. So there's like a third shot. I can take my camera and put it on a larger tripod and get a shot with my computer in the background and this pretty plant. I also have this set up here. So if I wanna sit in that chair, I can and have this prettiness. And then I have a mirror over here with another fairly good filming setup. And if you watched my office tour video, you'll know that that was super intentional. I wanted to have a lot of different filming spots. I also can come out here when this giant box is not here 
and film on the bench up against the shiplap in my hallway. So, I mean, I could really film in my whole house if I wanted to, but I purposely have a lot of different angles in my office because I want to be able to keep these videos visually interesting for you and to move it around. In order to do that with this large camera, the Canon 70D, in order to do that with this guy, I mean, I had to move a big tripod. I couldn't film with it on my desk because it was entirely too close to my face. Um, it's because of this lens. And it was much, much harder to move around, especially considering I was filming my audio separate than my video. About a year ago, actually more, because I, I definitely moved this camera when we moved. So maybe two years ago, I bought the Canon M50 and I bought it just like with the kit lens and thought, you know what, this is gonna be easier than carrying this big thing around and lugging it around if I wanna, you know, walk around or get vlog footage or whatever I can. I bought it, played with it for like a minute and then it literally sat on the shelf at my old house for months and months and months. And actually, I didn't start using the M50. Let me go look. I'll tell you exactly when I started using the M50. Until about two months ago, the first video on my channel that I filmed with it is my how to edit YouTube videos with iMovie video that was published on April 28th, 2020. So I had this camera sitting in my arsenal for years that I literally never used. Now, I should note that another problem that I had with this guy is that for video, you could totally set your ISO on auto and like, so if the clouds come over or some, you know, it gets dark, it's gonna rain, whatever, it would auto adjust, but it was never quite bright enough for me. So if I wanted to make it brighter, I had to turn up the exposure quite a bit and then I got kind of grainy quality videos. So while it did well in low light, I don't feel like it auto adjusted well in different different lighting situations. And so what happened was I got really frustrated having to move this camera and this external mic around and trying to figure out like what went where and trying to utilize all of the different filming spots I have in my office and in my house. And I also got frustrated with the fact that it really always had to be a pretty bright day outside for me to even film with that camera. So I had actually been watching someone else's video on like a vlog channel that I watch and they mentioned that they used an M50 and it was always such clear like well lit footage even if they were going in and out of their house or whatever and I was like I have this camera I bought this camera like years ago I need to figure out how to use it and like really see if it's any better I pulled out the M50 and it was love at first sight um, I think all the things that I had an issue with from my 70D I could correct with my M50 now the only thing was that um, kind of similar Similarly to the 70D, the audio built in to the M50 is not very good. And I had some external mics, I even had a Rode mic, and nothing really sounded good on top of the camera. But I knew I needed a simpler setup than what I had before. I really needed to be able to grab it, carry it around, move it around my desk, and not feel like I was it was taking forever because I'm busy and I have kids and I have kids in quarantine and like all all the things and so I needed something super super simple plus I really wanted to start getting more footage that wasn't just sitting at my desk and my husband and I were talking about starting this farm channel that we've started and so it was like okay I really need to make sure that the camera in one unit is good enough for me and not have to use a massive tripod, not have to set it really far back, not have to use external audio. And so the M50 really fixed all of that for me. It still has a slight blurry background effect. And, and if I bought a different lens for my camera, I could even increase that even more. But overall, I really, really love this camera. You can zoom in or zoom out with it straight from the lens. And so if I, you know, for some reason wanted to zoom in closer and crop, I can straight from within the camera. Overall, I really, really, really love my Canon M50. And then in order to fix the sound quality issues, I got a Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. Now, it's kind of expensive and I had never spent that much on a top of the camera mic and I was actually really nervous about it because I'd never really had a lot of luck before. But it turns out I had some 
some settings wrong in my camera I needed to fix. And this mic is just way better than any of the other ones I've had before and I am tickled to death with it. So current filming situation is as simple as natural lighting from a window, literally right behind you guys, right behind the camera, a Canon M50. I currently have it on my switch pod and I will link them below. Pat Flynn created a handheld um, vlogging tripod and I love it. It's really, really easy to use. It's just not quite tall enough for my desk so I have it on a box. And then the M50 and the Rode Mic Pro Plus. So that is really my setup right now. I mean, I don't have anything fancy. I'm not even using my big fancy 70D anymore. I'm not recording audio separately. I am literally recording everything all together. And honestly, it makes the process easier and it makes it to where I am not like dreading filming videos because I have to move a bunch of crap around. So again, I'm not opposed to external lights. I'm not opposed to recording audio separate from video. I'm not opposed any of it. But as far as a simple setup, I use the Canon M50 with a top of camera mic on it, plug straight in and natural lights. And that is it. So I know I kind of like went long with this and told you all about what I used to use, but I wanted to give you options and I wanted to show you kind of how I went from simple, like super simple with my iPhone to the G7X to immediately upgrading to this, how this met my needs for years. And then how I decided, you know, I love the quality of this and I really don't have anything bad to say, but the setup is just a little too complicated for me in my stage of life. And my stage of filming videos so I need to go with something more simple like the Canon M50. So hopefully that shows you kind of the different reasons I use the different things and all of that good jazz. Now I always in every video link up the equipment I use to film below in the description but I'm gonna make sure I link up the ring light that I have and the mic and the camera and really all of them. And then if you're looking for this type of equipment, you can do some research, see what you like best and go from there. I hope this was really helpful. Like I say, I used to love watching these types of videos. I still love to watch these types of videos because I like to see what other creators are using, how complicated or how simple they are making it. And like what equipment I have, I'm not utilizing. If you have any questions about my filming setup, about anything regarding YouTube, make sure you leave them in the comments below. And I'd also love to hear if you have also had similar struggles of like going more complicated and then making it easier again. Cause I think that's a pretty common thing. So let Let's chat it out in the comments below. And until next time, make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss any other videos with your girl, Jessica. Bye y'all.